In February of 2024, the FRA announced the potential for two new long-distance Amtrak routes through Utah, with both of them passing through all three major urban centers along the Wasatch Front. Furthermore, with momentum building for the Rio Grande plan in downtown Salt Lake City, it would make sense for Utah's only current Amtrak service to eventually be rerouted to loop north through Ogden, thereby standardizing the routing and simplifying operations. Throw in the potential for state-supported routes to Moab or even Cedar City, and you can see there is the real potential for a major rail resurgence in Utah. Most of the major facilities for this network are already in place. Provo has a small but decent train station, and the space to build a bigger one right next to the Front Runner station should they desire an upgrade. Salt Lake City has an average Amtrak station, but may become the envy of the nation with the Rio Grande plan. Moab and Cedar City have their own preliminary plans. The one city I hadn't heard much from was Ogden, but that recently changed as the city of Ogden and some partner developers presented their vision for redevelopment around the historic 100-year-old Union Station. The development side of things looks very encouraging, with new housing, retail, and office space centered around transit. I am also very happy with the sentiment of returning train service directly to the station building, but I have reservations about the two-level design shown off in the renders. While this could be made to work, there are serious issues in the current track layout around Union Station that ideally should be solved before intercity rail service returns to Ogden, and these go deeper than simply elevating the front-runner tracks. For example, a train arriving from the south would need to either saw their way in from the south if they are headed north to Idaho, or back in if they are headed east to Wyoming. If Ogden is going to regain its status as a major junction for passenger trains, some significant upgrades are needed, and I have some ideas on how to do it. Let me begin by stating my intentions. While not on the same level as the Rio Grande plan in Salt Lake City, my ideal layout for Ogden's Union Station is a long-term plan that does not need to be carried out right away. With the new long-distance trains probably still a decade out, and with only loose talk of corridor trains to Moab or southern Utah, the only real pressing issue is the Rio Grande plan, which would be easier to implement if Amtrak moved its servicing location from Salt Lake City to Ogden. Believe it or not, the distance between Salt Lake City and Wells, Nevada is exactly the same length on the existing route south of the lake or along my preferred route through Ogden and across the lake, at 215 miles each. This is critical, since it means that rerouting the current Amtrak service will neither add additional time or cost to existing operations. What will affect operations, however, is where exactly the trains will stop in Ogden. In order to avoid the weird routing issues that currently block the main line from the depot, my suggestion is to build a temporary pad here, below the 24th Street Bridge, where passengers can board and disembark, and where locomotives can be fueled from tanker trucks, just as they currently are. This location would allow trains arriving from the north, south, or west to avoid conflicts with the busy freight yards, and would not require any new track work. A shuttle bus would be needed to move passengers from Union Station to the platforms, but this sort of thing is a well-established practice at airports already, and was done for years while Denver Union Station was under construction and required a temporary platform far away from the work area. But obviously, this would not be a sustainable, permanent solution. What we want, long term, is restored service to the beautiful and historic Ogden Union Station, located right in the center of downtown. The first major obstacle for trains arriving from the south are the busy Union Pacific mainline tracks, originally laid down in 1869 as part of the Transcontinental Railroad. UTA's frontrunner handles this obstacle by using two enormous flyover bridges connected by an even larger earthen berm, which I consider to be one of the most undergraded pieces of infrastructure in Utah. From start to end, it is one and a quarter miles long, making it 2,000 feet longer than the famous Redondo flyover in downtown Los Angeles. Without it, frequent commuter trains wouldn't be able to get anywhere close to downtown Ogden, and UTA quietly built it all on its own without fanfare or drama. Wouldn't it be nice if more projects were like that? Unless we want our intercity trains' schedules to be at the mercy of freight trains, we are going to need something similar. My suggestion is a shorter, single-track structure parallel to the UTA flyover, running for a total length of 4,000 feet, including a 750-foot-long bridge beside the similar UTA one. Ideally, the UTA berm could be widened to simplify the structure and to save costs, while also preserving space for the future second UTA track. 
The grade on both sides of this bridge is 2%, which is perfectly acceptable for passenger trains, even the long-distance sleeper trains that Amtrak prefers. On the north side of the bridge, the tracks would need to flatten out quickly for the station platforms. You'll see that, in this configuration, there would be new platforms for both UTA Frontrunner and Intercity trains, and that the historic station tracks would be left alone. These could be used in the future for special events or museum displays, but I don't think it would be worth it to try and upgrade them for heavy, regular use. For instance, the question will arise again of how high to build the intercity rail platform, and so far the answer is still unclear. By building new platforms, we gain the ability to be flexible in our design, as well as giving plenty of space for both passengers and servicing crews. In this view, I am showing 33 foot wide platforms, which are as wide as the platforms of the current North Temple Frontrunner Station. The historic platform is only 18 feet wide, or half as much. One reason for this extra width is this underground passage between the station platforms and the historic station building. Believe it or not, Ogden Union Station already had one of these back in its heyday, but because it was narrow, inaccessible, and costly to maintain, the tunnel was filled in and paved over many years ago. Building a bigger and better tunnel would allow passengers to access their trains without need to cross active railroad tracks or face the sometimes harsh Utah weather, while also adding capacity and efficiency to passenger movement. I am showing the escalators and elevators entering the Great Hall through these three archways, using space that is currently used by an art gallery, but there are several configurations this could take. In order to get the full 1,000 foot length for both platforms, I've drawn them at a skewed angle compared to the original station tracks, but parallel with the existing freight yards. This skew has several additional benefits. First, by moving farther away from Wall Avenue, there was now space to move the ramp for the 24th Street Viaduct over by a block, so that we no longer have essentially freeway-level infrastructure taking up valuable street space downtown. Such a design would also mean that the historic tracks would be stub-ended, but judging by the state of the essentially abandoned tracks to the north, I don't anticipate this being a problem. The other major benefit of the skewed angle is that it opens up over 15 acres of land for redevelopment, and, just like the Rio Grande plan, this land can become a new source of tax revenue, which makes the project financially sustainable in the long run. The bus station can and should remain where it is, and would be connected by a separate set of short tunnels and a sidewalk, as a way of helping to promote the new developments toward being transit-oriented. Another area that can be open for development is this land here, west of the rail yards. I'm showing here how one of Union Pacific's yards can be consolidated further to the east, which would open up around 50 acres of land beside the riverfront area. Unlike the Rio Grande plan, where the goal is to reunite parts of the city that have been separated by railroad tracks, the riverfront in Ogden is a new opportunity. My preference is to leave this track in place to be the dividing line between natural parkland and whatever new development is constructed, mainly because I think it would be an ideal place for the Utah State Railroad Museum to run excursion trains. If Kennecott can help build a fancy new natural history museum, then perhaps they can also be persuaded to help construct a far simpler structure to keep Utah's historic train collection indoors and perhaps even donate their own historic trains to the collection as well. At the Weber River, the tracks cross a historic Pegram Truss Bridge, which is an exceptionally rare type of iron bridge dating back to 1897, and would make a great attraction for museum goers. Ideally, the excursion could run in a full loop, such as this design of 2.75 miles, in order to give patrons a 15-minute ride on historic equipment. Since the Heber Valley Railroad, located on the opposite side of the Wasatch Front, is also owned by the state of Utah, perhaps some occasional lending or shuffling of equipment would bring living railroad history to a far greater portion of Utahns, young and old. But now I'm just spitballing ideas. To return to the new platforms, we have a good connection to the south, and a connection to the east is easy enough with a new track to the main line here. Heading north and west is also fairly simple, with the intercity track interlocking with the existing main lines here. But there is one last connection that is going to be very troublesome. This train, headed west from Cheyenne, will need to turn south towards Salt Lake City and Las Vegas. But in this layout, that would require the train to back out onto the main line and cross multiple tracks before heading south. For one train a day, that may not be so bad. 
But if we want to future-proof our design for multiple trains per day, say, for example, a corridor service up to Morgan, the Wasatch Back, and Evanston, then we will need to create a route for trains from the east to run up to the depot, then loop around to the south. I accomplished this with a second, much shorter flyover on the north side of the yard, which would then loop to the south using existing industrial trackage, which would need only a few minor upgrades. This line would then tie into the existing main line just north of the Roy Frontrunner Station, or about where the Rio Grande Bike Trail currently ends. And so it is critical that a right-of-way be preserved to link these two alignments together in the future. To summarize, when all is said and done, we will be left with 1. A restored Ogden Union Station, which will once again be a major rail junction for trains headed in all four directions multiple times per day. 2. Convenient and accessible platforms to board, alight, and service these trains. 3. Great separated passenger rail connections to the north, east, west, and two to the south in order to accommodate all current and future potential rail routings. 4. Dozens of acres of newly opened land able to be redeveloped for the citizens of Ogden. And 5. A new space to relocate and expand the state museums, including tracks to run historic trains, turning dead history into living experiences. Make no mistake, these are lofty goals, and will take a long time to realize. But it is important that we discuss these kinds of plans now, so that we can coordinate our efforts and take the slow, steady steps towards making visions into reality. In the words of a great American, where there is no vision, there is no hope. And I would posit that where there is vision, there is hope. I'm Christian Linhart. Thank you for watching.